Okay. Um, let's X this out. Let's get this down. This is radiology. Chapter 21, exactly. Let me log in here. Start this out. Okay. Na, 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 na. So, we started recording. We're good here. Um, let's share our window here so we can do something. So, this chapter, uh, well, next exam we'll have technically four chapters. This chapter is one of the uh, really important chapters that we need to know and work on and for you guys to remember because it has the anatomical landmarks that we will see in an x-ray. So one of the important things that we need to be able to recognize when we take an x-ray, well, you know that uh, radiology doesn't show exactly similar on, on what we see, right? It shows the inside of the bone. Uh, and then we know that the hollow spaces that are not filled up by bone, uh, like for example, with nerves or the openings where the nerves will come from, would appear radiolucent, which means gray, and also cavities and diseases usually also radiolucent, right? So we need to be able to recognize what is a normal landmark and what is an abnormal or disease tissue, right? So since we work all across the mouth on the maxillary and mandibular arches, we have to know the main landmarks of these bones and uh, specific areas that will be uh, uh, an, of an interest for us in radiology. Again, because when you take an x-ray, you should be able to recognize if there is uh, an abnormality in your radiology that you took, or you know if it's just a normal, regular things that you would see in that area, okay? So that's the whole thing. That's what we're trying to do in here. Um, what I put here for you, on the resources, I put the 3D skull, which you guys have should have seen before uh, when I put that for you for the teeth. It just gives you that 3D, you know, view of the teeth, I mean, of the bones. So some of you might like to work with it. Uh, it might benefit you. I'm going to switch to the other side. You see there is here two views. So one view is just the maxillary and mandibular. And another view is the whole arch, I mean, the whole skull, right? Uh, that is because we have another bone that we are interested in here, just this bone here, which is the zygoma, the zygomatic bone here. So that's the only thing I put that in for you because uh, you, we will start seeing that in there. Um, so let me go back here for a second. We know that we have two arches, right? The arch that is on top, that is the maxillary arch and then we have the mandibular arch but if we're calling the bones names so this would be the maxilla right and this would be the mandible that's the name of the bone itself so mandible and maxilla um the main things that we will be looking at you know if we start on the maxillary arch here or the maxillary region when we are taking an x-ray for example Again, I'm going to explain a little bit on the 3D, and then we're going to the slides one by one. So if we're taking an x-ray on the anterior teeth here on the front, so we're not just seeing the teeth, right? We're seeing the bone of the maxillary arch, and we're seeing this empty space. And that is what, not the sinuses, sinuses are inside, but here in the front, this is the, the nose space, right? The nasal uh, cavity in there. That's where our nose, right? That's our nose here. So we'll see an empty hollow space that looks like that. And that is because we have the nose in here. That is one of the things that we'll be seeing. Uh, we do have uh, what we call sinuses, which are hollow spaces within the bone. So in the maxillary arch, we have here in this area, a hollow space within the bone. So I am not, I cannot really see it here. Even if I isolate, I can rotate it. But you see these kind of bulgy areas? 
these are where the sinuses will be. So these are like empty spaces and we call them sinuses. And the sinuses technically would help with the, uh, making our skull a little bit more light and also for the sound uh, production and also has some features in producing mucus to fight off bacteria and for our uh, nose. So that's where the sinuses are. So that's just something that we will see uh, when we are taking an x-ray on the side of the mouth, right? On the posterior teeth. So for molars, premolars maybe, we can see sinuses, which is in that area of the maxillary arch, right? Um, one more thing that we can see, you see this suture here or this line here in between the, in, in the middle of the maxillary arch, right? So we will see that as well. This is a, a mid-palatine suture because we know we have the palate, right? That's the palate here. We're looking at it from the inside. And then we have this mid-palatine suture that will appear as a line, like a fracture. So again, knowing that there is this line, I'm just, let me isolate that. Knowing that there is a line on our palate that is normal, this would give us again a good reference that this is not something that is abnormal. That's something that we can see in regular maxillary x-rays, okay? And now also, again, we're still all in the interior region here talking. You see there is an, an empty space here. There's an opening, right? And any opening we call it what? Foramen, right? Foramen, foramen, right? So this is in where, where which teeth that we have here in the front? Incisor. So what do we call this? An incisive foramen, right? Or incisive foramen, okay? So that's another thing that we will see that will look radiolucent in our x-rays, again, in that region. Trying to remember, I'm, I know I'm going to forget a few things here and there. Um, let's redo this or reset it. Another thing that we might see, you see that this is the lateral tooth, right? That's the lateral incisor. This is the central incisor and this is the lateral incisor. There is some kind of, sorry about that. There is some kind of a depression that you can see next to the lateral tooth. Just the way that the bone is depressed because next it's next to the canine, which is the corner of the mouth. There is this hollowness or shallowness. So this is, this is called the lateral fossa that will look also a little bit more radiolucent than the regular bone. You'll see a space here on the maxillary arch. And again, if we go move a little bit more forward or backwards to the posterior teeth, so so far on the anterior teeth, we know that we have the nasal cavity here, the nose, nasal fossa. Uh, by the way, we have the nasal septum as well. So that's that bone here that splits our nose in half. Uh, we have the nasal spine, this uh, pointy bony structure that we have on the nose here. That's all on the interior region. We have the mid-palatine suture that is in the middle between our maxillary arch, two, two sides. Same thing on the palate here. Uh, we have the lateral fossa here, and then we have the incisive foramen from the inside that we can see there on the lateral. And again, the x-ray, because it's a 2D image, we will see all of these superimposed on each other. So like everything looks in a 2D image for us with an x-ray. And then on the posterior side of our maxillary arch, uh, we will see that uh, sinus areas that, that I said that we will have. So it's like this empty spaces, big empty spaces that look radiolucent on our arches here on the maxillary arch. And that is one of the main points that we'll see on the maxillary arch. And we have one more, I know we have more than that, but one of the main things also that we will see is this bony structure and what do we call that on the maxillary arch that's the maxillary tuberosity tuberosity right that's another thing that we will see and guess what we will see also if we're taking a really back image here posterior image of the maxillary arch 
we might actually see what the mandibular arch here. Because C, you know, if you're taking here an x-ray, you're putting your uh, film in this area, right? You will see the coronoid process of the mandible. So you'll see something that is appearing out there that is not related to the maxillary arch because it's the mandible arch actually, and that's the coronoid process. So if I hide this, you can see how this can superimpose on the maxillary arch, right? And can show in there. Another thing that can show is the zygoma and zygomatic arch or process of the maxillary arch. Again, this is the maxillary arch and this is the zygomatic bone, okay? So if I remove this, again, you can see, we will see this bone in here when we're taking an X-ray for the maxillary molars on this side. So these are the things, again, and that's why I'm putting this in 3D for you guys to just kind of relate in a 3D dimensional way, because when we are going to look at these on here, it might look a little bit different. Okay, so let's switch gears and then go to our uh, presentation for today. We're going to start with the maxillary arch and then we're going to go to the mandibular afterwards. So we're going to see these also and discuss them. Let's go here and let me share my screen. And I want to share this. Just need to switch. Okay. So now we're back at our presentation. Let's take a look at what we have here. So definitely, as we said, we want to be able to be able to identify the major bones that we have. And the anatomical landmarks, we want to see the normal anatomy to be able to recognize any deviations that can happen. A lot of times the structures will be superimposed on each other. As I said, you know, we can see multiple bones in one exposure or multiple structures. Some landmarks might not be recorded, you know, because of the way that we mount or put the x-ray in. And uh, sometimes the x-ray angle that we put can distort the appearance of the structures. So they might not look exactly like we see them on a regular bone, but we have to be able to uh, recognize them. So definitely one of the, we'll talk about the general things that we'll see across the board of any type of exposure, which will be the bones, the teeth, right? The periodontal ligament spaces, uh, lamina dura. So this will be all around all of the exposures. And then we'll go one exposure at a time to see like, what are we going to see on the maxillary centrals? What are we going to see on the maxillary canine uh, exposure? What are we going to see on the maxillary primal and so on and so forth. So we'll start with the general stuff. We know the enamel, the dentin, the pulp chamber, uh, cementum, all of these things. We'll see the periodontal ligament here. And again, since we just talked about that, you guys know and the lamina dura, right, that we have also seen, and then we have the trabecular bone. So if we go down to these um, spaces that we have, we know that radiolucent would appear, no, like what, white or dark? White. Huh? Light. Lucent. Black, dark, right? And that's why it appears white. Okay, yeah, because yeah, in the in the X-ray, the teeth will come out white. Right. But everything else will come out like exactly. Okay. So it's translucent, right? Something has gone wrong with my set up here. I cannot select. Let me just flip this for a second. So dark gray, lucent, and opaque will be white. We know that, again, the main bones of skulls of the skull that we're going to see would be the maxillary, the mandible, or the maxillary, the mandible, 
and the zygomatic arch or the zygoma. Oop, what did I do? We're good. So you guys should know this other part now that we already talked about in science. Gland clines the alveolus or the tooth socket. What type, what part of the bone? The bundle bone, right? Which is technically the lamina dura. On x-ray, we call it the lamina dura. And what bone covers the out, you know, outside of the, the outer layer of the maxillary and mandibular arch? It's the cortical. And then the spongy bone also that we call cancellous bone. That is the inside of the bone. And we have that picture here that shows us that. I think I doubled it somehow. But again, we already talked about this in the previous lecture. Uh, you can see this is the compact or cortic uh, cortical bone, and then the cancellus that is inside. And then we know that the lamina dura is what covers or surrounds the the tooth. Again, we're talking here about general stuff that you're going to see almost in any exposure. You always see teeth. You always see lamina dura. You always see uh, the bone. Uh, another thing that we will see. So all of these are technically radio opaque, right? Most of them are radio opaque. Uh, definitely, the cancellous bone is a little bit more radio lucent than you know compared to the. Uh, to the other types of bone. And then we have the, also the periodontal ligament space. And see, because here we're talking about radiology. We're not talking about the actual thing. So on x-ray, the, the periodontal ligaments would not appear because technically there are fibers, and fibers are not that dense. So x-ray will pass through them, and we'll have a radiolucent uh, area. So see, this is the thin radiolucent border that surrounds the lamina dura and the roots. So in this x-ray exposure that we see here, uh, number one is what part of the tooth? Enamel or dentin or pulp? Dentin, right? Number two is enamel, right? And number three, pulp chamber, exactly. Number four, Periodontal ligament space, exactly, right? You can see that line that goes all around the tooth. <clears throat> Number five is the lamina, lamina dura, right? And that is the bone, that hard bone that surrounds the tooth socket. And then we have the root canal and we have the cancellous bone. So again, this shows us a little bit more clear area. And again, you can see that empty space that we have for the periodontal ligament, right? And then we have next to it the lamina dura. Yes, what is it? Cancel bone? Yes. Right, so you guys can see the lamina dura here clear. We have that white, sharp white color that surrounds the tooth. And then we have another uh, empty space that is the space for the periodontal ligament. And then we have the tooth here on the other side, right? And guess what this is, this white radio opaque stuff is? Amalgam filling, right? That's an amalgam filling. This is jumping everywhere. Okay. 
We're good, guys. You fill this out. Lamina dura, put it down to ligament space, and all of that. Again, these are things that we will see most probably everywhere. Not my, well, almost everywhere, right? As long as you're doing exposures for teeth, you're going to see enamel, dentin, pulp chamber, you're going to see the periodontal ligament space. So this is something to notice, you know, the periodontal space, the periodontal ligament space would actually get a little bit wider when we have a uh, root infection. Because the root infection, the fluids that comes out of here, right, because we can have a, a what do we call a period, uh, periapical abscess, right? The fluids that come up here, it can come through the periodontal ligament space, and this can widen. Not the, it will not appear thin anymore. And this is one of the things that the dentist would look for to make sure or to know that, that we have a, an infection. You have a pulp infection. Sometimes in the beginning of the pulp infection, you cannot see a big uh, periapical abscess, but you can see there is a little bit of widening of the periodontal ligament spaces. So again, that's what we're going to look for. And that's why these things are important for us to be able to understand and know. Okay, so we know that enamel appear radio opaque, right? Dentin. Also radio opaque, but less than enamel. Cementum, it's hard to notice it, you know, from dentin and the x-ray because it's too thin. So you're not really, it's not distinguishable. And then the pulp appears radiolucent, exactly, because it's, a, it's not empty, but it has nerves and blood supply, and these things are not dense as bone, right? So they would appear or not as dense as dentin or enamel, so it will appear clear or radiolucent. And again, this picture just have these things here. So you can see, you know, sometimes we will see the developing teeth that have incomplete crowns or root formation. So you can see here that we have some primary teeth that are starting to fall, right? Number one and two, primary canine, primary first molar where with resorb roots and then we have permanent teeth that are actually starting to form and coming up and they have not yet finished forming their uh, roots so again these things that we can see in x-ray and they're normal so this is just uh something that you're going to look at later on once you start knowing the stuff and this would help you kind of or guide you through uh, to expect things like if we are taking an x-ray, if it's for maxillary arch uh, and on the anterior region, for example, and it's radio opaque, then it's one of these things that we can see. Okay. And then if it's radio lucent, then it's the other things. So this is just kind of a guide for you after you get to know all of the anatomical landmarks uh, and, you know, gives you some kind of guide. Okay, I'm taking an anterior, so most probably... I'm not going to see maxillary sinus there, right? Most probably I'm going to see a nasal uh, fossa or a nasal cavity, right? I'm going to see uh, the incisive foramen and so on and so forth. So just gives you something to, uh, to guide you through. Um, and then this is also some guide kind of, so anything that has canal in it, foramen, fossa, meatus, sinus, space, suture, it will appear as radiolucent in x-ray. And anything that is bone, border, process, ridge, spine, tubercles, tuberosity would appear radio opaque. Okay? So any anywhere where you would hear, you know, if I tell you that the mental foramen, what it does it is it a radiolucent or radio opaque without having to know what it is? You know, foramen is always an opening and always look radiolucent, right? So this is again just a guide for you. Uh, so that you know these spaces and as I said like uh, median palatine suture it's the suture between the the, the palatine the, the two parts of the maxillary arch uh, it will appear radiolucent again just because you have that guide it can help you a little bit with knowing which one is radiolucent and which one is radio opaque uh, these are all of our landmarks i think so um, most of them so 
in an incisor area on the maxillary arch, you'll see all of these. On the mandible, you'll see all of that. So again, this is a guide to go back to after most probably we finish going through all of the anatomical landmarks. You can go back here to know and kind of to um, be able to recognize all of these things that are speci on specific areas and what you're going to see. Okay. Uh, this is, again, just a picture for you to see the maxillary arch or the maxillary, the mandible and zygomatic bone and the nasal bone that we have. And again, these are of our importance because we see these in our x-rays. Okay, now we are starting. So we're starting with the maxillary anterior view, so it will be on the incisors. You know, again, now we're thinking about these x-rays, like when we take an FMS, so we have centrals view, canine and lateral, premolars, and molars, right? So we're going to take each one of these exposures and see whatever things that we have in them. So this is the actual bone that you're looking at, and this one is front view. This, this looks here, this picture on the side, this is front, like we're looking at from the front, and this one is from the palate, like from the back, inside of the mouth, right? So we already talked about these things. Uh, you can see number A is the nasal septum. That is the bone that splits our nose into two sides, right? You have B, the fossa, which is the empty space of the nose. All of that empty space. So nasal septum would appear what? Radio opaque, right? Radio opaque, which means why? Because it's bone. Uh, nasal fossa would appear radio lucent because it's a space, it's a fossa. Okay. And then you have the anterior nasal spine. And again, this is like a pointy bone at the nose. So all of that related to the nose, we can always know all of that. So spine would appear what? Radio opaque because again, it's part of the bone, right? Now that is on the front. That's what we're going to see on the front. On the back, well, again, on the x-ray, we'll see all of them together. On the back, we can see the incisive foramen. And again, this is the empty space here that the uh, nerves will pass through. It's a little bit of a depression and opening. So since it's an opening, a depression, a foramen, it will appear radio lucent, right? And then we have a median palatine suture. And again, this is the line between the two parts of the maxillary arch, and because it's a suture, it is radiolucent, okay? Now, if we're looking, this is the bone, you know, anatomy. Now, if we're looking at the x-ray anatomy here, again, you can see all of these. So, for example, let's see. Oh, there is one thing that you don't see there. Number one, you see that highlight shadow there? right? That is the nose of the patient. <laughs> because when we are taking that x-ray, we're placing the, the, uh, we're placing the, uh, the XCP like right there on the nose, correct? If you've taken the central incisors uh, in the lab, you put that in there. And because it's, you know, the nose is there and it's a little bit more cartilage than just regular soft tissue, we can actually see the nose shade in a way on our teeth. It would not be appearing too much, but you can see again on the next picture here, number two, that's the nose again, okay? That's how it actually appear on an x-ray. So this is what number one is, the outline of the nose, just like a line that goes around. Number two here is the incisive foramen. And again, you can see how it looks like a heart right and this is the one that we looked at here that is the incisive foramen that we looked at on the back it's the opening that the nerves will pass through on the palate from inside number three is the lateral fossa remember again i showed you on the uh i showed you on the 3d model that we have a fossa that is related to the lateral um uh, tooth and it's just a little bit of a depression that it will start appearing a little bit more radiolucent, but it's a normal depression that you can see in there. 
Number four is the huh? nasal, right? That's the nasal fossa. That's what our nose is, right? That's the emptiness, the space. And number five is the nasal septum, right? That's the bone that have our nose in two parts. And then number six is the border of the nasal fossa. So all of these things we already seen here. This is the nasal fossa, number B, right? The empty space. And A is the septum, which is the bone. And then we have just the border of it, so that's not a problem. Number seven, that's the nasal spine that, again, we saw here. That is the front of the nose, that part, which is C. And number eight is the median palatine suture, which, again, we saw in here on the back, which was number E. And that's the line between the two arches. I mean, the two halves of the maxillary arch. Okay. Any questions? So, again, I mean, this will go that way. <laughs> We're just going to do this all through these slides. Um, you know, my advice is just to practice. I'm going to give you some of these games that you can just, you know, play with them. And then you have the 3D model that I put for you, and you have this. And it's just more of just getting more uh, related to these, you know, playing with these and knowing where each part is, uh, you just get more comfortable and you kind of start to make a full picture for yourself. Okay, this is where everything at. This is the maxillary. This is the mandibular. But again, it's good thing to notice again, these things that, like, for example, on the incisors, you'll always see things that are related to the nose, right? Like we have the nose, we have the nasal septum, the sposa. So these things, right? the spine this is an actual x-ray so we have technically the same thing the incisive foramen uh which you see here is much less pronounced than what we saw in this picture because this picture is technically like a, a drawing more than an actual x-ray so that's the incisive foramen here number two is the outline of the patient's nose right and we see that in there Number three is the lateral fossa. Again, that depression that we see here. Uh, number four, do, 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 where is that? Oh, I didn't see. Number four is the nasal fossa. And number five is the nasal septum. And number six is the border of the nose, a nasal fossa. And number seven is the nasal spine. So all of things related to the nose, right? And then we have the median palatine suture again. You can see in x-rays, um, it looks like a good empty space, radiolucent space here. Um, but again, these, you know, drawings are much clearer to see things with. So that's why uh, we have them there. But an x-ray, and hopefully now as you start learning these things, when you go and take x-rays on Dexter's, you're going to notice these and be able to recognize them more. Okay, so keep an eye on that when you start taking your x-rays. Okay, now we're going to the canine area. So again, this is uh, an actual bone picture and this is the x-ray. Technically what we're going to see, we're still seeing some part of the nose, right? Because if this is the, this is the canine here and this is what, this is the lateral tooth. So we're still having the nose here in that area. So on a canine x-ray, we can see both the nasal fossa and the maxillary sinus. So number A is the floor of the nasal fossa here, which, which is because the border, but we see the nasal fossa in that area. And then we have the maxillary sinus, which is that empty hollow space. And we know that maxillary sinus appear radio lucent, right? It's an empty hollow space. So. And then we have the lateral fossa, which also appear radio lucent, which is that area again, kind of between the lateral and the canine that you can see here. Um, again, it's a depression, so the bone is not as thick as the uh, other areas. And this is just a picture that shows you these areas on an actual bone. Okay, now let's take a look at the drawing here. Okay, number one is the... 
Huh? What year is that? Lateral incisor. So this is the lateral, lateral fossa. Number two is the nasal fossa, right? Because we still see the nose here. They call this the inverted Y. So this thing here, it's like a Y, but inverted, right? So the inverted Y is that, you know, mark between the nasal fossa and the maxillary sinus, right? You can see this is the maxillary sinus, number four, right? And number two is the nasal fossa. So that inverted Y will be seen on a canine x-ray usually um, to differentiate between these two fossas that we have, the nasal and the maxillary sinus. And then here on five, uh, we just see that there is a big, uh, a good uh, radial opacity that is really white area. This is because teeth are overlapping each other because of the angulation usually with the canine. We have to have some kind of, it's always appearing there. We have a overlapping again because it's, it's an angled area, not a straight area that we can shoot through. Okay. Again, this is an x-ray, an actual x-ray. You see this is the inverted Y. This is our canine. This is our lateral. So number one is the lateral fossa, right? And number two is the nasal fossa. We know the inverted Y. And number four is the maxillary sinus, exactly. And then we have the overlapping. So again, hopefully you can relate. We're going now a little bit posterior, right? Moving posteriorly. We did the central uh, x-ray, centrals and kind of laterals, and then now laterals and canines. The next x-rays that we're going to see are the premolars, right? Okay. So now here, this is our canine, so we are way from the nose, right? The nose is in this area. We don't see the nose anymore. So what is that big empty space that we see here? That is the, yeah, maxillary sinus, right? So number two is maxillary sinus. Number one is pointing to the border of the maxillary sinus, right? Because, you'll again, we'll see the x-ray in a minute there, and you can see. Number three, there is a septum here that you don't really see much often with the regular x-ray. Number five, where is that? Number four, we have the zygoma. Remember the zygoma that we saw there? You know, that bone that goes here is kind of the cheekbone, right? That's our zygoma. And... I was telling you that it will start showing now when we go posteriorly. So you can see it in there. That is the uh, zygomatic process of the maxillary teeth, of the maxillary arch. And then we have number five, the actual zygoma. So technically it runs that way. But again, because we're in 2D, we see it like overlap itself. But that is the zygomatic bone here. And this is the maxillary bone. And that's how it's appearing. And then you have the border of zygomatic arch. Again, this is all zygoma here. So we'll see this next picture. So number one is the border of the maxillary sinus, right? We know that big area there is the maxillary sinus. Number two is the actual maxillary sinus. Number three, the zygomatic. So these areas that are more... Let's see, four, they put four here, the maxillary sinus septum, but these are all zygomatic areas, right? So we have the zygoma itself on number five. It doesn't really appear much. You can see it's because there's a lot of overlapping here, uh, but that is its location, you know, where you see the sinus, it's kind of covering or, you know, um, superimposing on the sinus area. And that's how you can kind of find it. It's a little bit more on the top area of the film, 
um, and again, more towards the molars a little bit than the premolars. And that's how you can kind of find it. Now we'll take a look even more further to the molar view. That was the premolar view. So again, things that we already talked about here, the border of the maxillary sinus, the actual maxillary sinus on number two. And again, the maxillary sinus runs all the way. All of this is the maxillary sinus. We have some septums be between them, you know, that that's split it into multiple parts, but it's still all of this is the maxillary sinus. And now again, we still see the zygomatic arch, right? You see it's in there. That's the border of it. Number three as well, and number four. So we're still seeing the zygoma even more clear this time, almost in the middle of the picture. Okay, let's see. We have the hamulus, which is a notch that comes from a bone that is related to the maxillary arch called the sphenoid bone. So again, we don't want to go too deep in that. Just know that it's that's the hamulus notch technically. Um, that you will see all the way at the end of the uh, of a maxillary uh, shot. We know the maxillary tuberosity, right? Number eight here, the last part, the bony uh, part on the end. And number nine is, huh? Yeah, the mandible, right? That's the coronoid. That's the coronoid process of the mandibular arch. That is what I was going, what I showed you uh, in the beginning when I was explaining that the mandible can be in the way when we're taking an x-ray on the posterior maxillary or on the third molar region specifically. We can see the mandible. So if I would draw this to complete it, I would have the mandible looking like that technically. And that's the other part of the mandible. And that's the mandible there. So that is the coronoid process of the mandible. And again, we'll have a picture for the mandible as well. Okay, moving on. Same thing. This is an x-ray that you can see all these things that we talked about. So this is the border of the maxillary sinus. Right, and then we have number two, the maxillary sinus itself. And again, this is all extension of the maxillary sinus. Uh, you have the zygomatic areas in there. Um, number five is that area. This is what also the other bone that the hamulus come, came from, which is the sphenoid. Again, I don't want to go too deep into it. But again, this is something that you might see along with the hamulus. And there at the last part of, uh, of a molar exposure on the maxillary arch. You see number six, we talked about that, maxillary tuberosity, number seven, that is here. And you can see this also, and that is what, that is the coronoid process of the mandibular arch, number eight. And definitely, I mean, you can see these pictures better on your screen than on this, but you can relate. All good. Moving on. Okay. Again, so number two is, again, the coronoid, oh, well, maxillary tuberosity, sorry, I thought they were appearing here. And then man number three is the coronoid process. Same thing again. You can see that's the mandible going in here. And that's the maxillary tuberosity here. And number one is all of that maxillary sinus that you see there. And then you see the hamulus on number five that is not that much clear. And the lateral pterygoid plate on the end there. Moving on, yes, okay.
this is what we were talking about. Again, this is the shot for the maxillary molars, right? A periapical x-ray is here, and most probably you're going to see the coronoid process of the mandible. And the shot, right? Superimposing. This is the zygomatic process of the man of the maxillary arch, and then related to the zygomatic bone in here. And again, we can see these as well in our shot. Any questions so far? Just a lot of information that you guys need to go back and. When is the test? So see, this is why I actually started with this one. We have four more lectures before the test. So four more weeks, and then the fifth is the test, I think. So I'll try every week to play some games. We play some games of this just to get to know all of that. And then by the time we're in the tests, we really got this, OK? Uh, moving on, again, this is the mandible. We already know the coronoid process of the mandible. And we don't know anything else. So, <laughs> right? Because we didn't talk about anything else other than that. So, other than the coronoid process, we have the condyle on the other end. This is what articulates with what? With the temporal bone. And this is where we have the temporal mandibular joint, right? That area there, temporal mandibular joint. Uh, that is called the ramus of the mandible. All of this, that is the angle of the mandible, and this is the body of the mandible. So things that we're going to see in an x-ray, again, it will be the coronoid, no, uh, the coronoid process, the oblique ridge, which is technically, you can kind of feel on yourself on the outside. So that's how the ramus technically connects to the body. We have a small ridge here. And these are also a placement for, uh, for muscles. So muscle attachments a lot of times require some ridges so they can attach to on the side. And again, when we said uh, ridges, we know that ridges would be always radio opaque, radio opaque, right? It's a ridge because it's a part of the bone that is actually even more kind of harder, stronger, or have a little bit of a, uh, extra bone to it. So we'll see the oblique ridge, which is from the outside. We'll see the coronoid process. Uh, we'll see the body of the mandible on the end. We'll see the mental foramen, and we'll see the mental ridge. So the mental foramen is where the nerve comes from. Well, the nerve comes from here and runs all the way through. And this is where our innervation for our teeth come from. And in this area, there is another opening that the nerve escapes from a little bit, but it continues as well. So this is all the mandibular canal that we're going to see that have the nerve that runs. It's the inferior alveolar nerve that actually innervate all of our mandibular teeth. Anyway, we have an opening here, which is a foramen that we call the mental foramen. And that is the one that uh, we'll see also in x-ray. And since it's a foramen, it will appear radio lucent, right? And same thing for the mandibular canal that I appeared here. That's the mandibular canal. Again, we have a picture for that. But this will appear also radio lucent. Okay, let's move on. So this is the mandibular foramen where the mandibular canal runs inside on both sides. So it goes here and here. Well, there. And this is the, these are the incisors. We have a lingual foramen, again, for nerves. And then we have some rough patches here. It's like a ridge that we call genial tubercle. Again, some of the attachments of the muscles and fibers will attach there on that area. So we'll see a lingual foramen. We'll see a genial tubercle. We'll see the myohyoid ridge. Again, that's because the myohyoid muscle attached to it. Again, this is from the inside of the mandible. We will see the submandibular fossa, and since it's a fossa, it will appear radio lucent. Okay? Nothing is making sense anymore, huh? <laughs> we got to that point now. Should we see the 3D? Uh, let's just take a look at the 3D picture. Hopefully, this would relate a few more information to you guys. 
So this is our mandible. Let's isolate it. Okay. So things that we're going to see, this is, what is that here? What is that ridge? The oblique ridge, right? Because we're looking at it from this side. That's the oblique ridge, right? This is the coronoid process, and this is the condyle, right? The mandibular condyle. We know that this is the ramus. This is the angle. This is the body. What is this opening that we have here? The, the mental foramen, right? That's the mental foramen. The genial tubercle is from the inside, right? See, we're still on the outside. So outside, we see the mental foramen. We see the ridge, the oblique ridge, right? We see the coronoid process here. So if we go to the other side on the inside, we see the myohyoid ridge that is in here, right? And we see uh, mandibular fossa or submandibular fossa here, which is a depression. We see that genoid tubercle and we see this emptiness or uh, foramen. That is what the lingual foramen, okay? So again, hopefully the 3D would show you a little bit more of a, of a context. So this is where the nerve runs from. This is the L inferior alveolar nerve and runs inside of the bone and then there is that opening the mental foramen where it appears from and then we also have the mental ridge here uh, that is a ridge that we can also see on the x-ray okay so let's go back and uh, see our slides Exactly, yes. But it, it's not all of it out. Some of the parts of it goes out. Like we have a mental nerve that comes out of it. But it continues as well inside of the bone to go to the incisors. Yeah. Okay, moving on. We're, we're there. We're there, guys. We're going to finish this and <laughs> get all of that done. So, again, this is a picture where we can see all of these things that we already talked about. This is the inside of you of the mandible. So you can see uh, the lingual foramen, right? And you can see the genial tubercle in an actual bone picture. And then on here, you can see the mental ridge, right? And then you can see the mental fossa. Well, I didn't say about talk about the mental fossa, but just a depression that you can see here a little bit underneath the anterior uh, I mean, the uh, incisors of the mandible, it's a thin area. Again, any fossa is just a depression in the bone. And again, you can kind of feel it on your uh, mandible, on the anterior teeth, just below them, there's a little bit of depression in there. So usually that area, which is a fossa, would appear a little bit more radiolucent, okay? So let's take a look at these things that we talked about already. The mental ridge, you see how it kind of appears, and this is related to this, right? That's the mental ridge. We have these nutrient canals and nutrient foramen. This is where, you know, you might see some of these openings in the bone, and this is because, you know, that's where the some of the blood supply comes through, and it's more um, apparent and mandible, especially in this area because it's too thin, right? So we can see through these uh, sometimes in x-rays. It's not like a big landmark, uh, anatomical landmark, but again, you might see them, so don't think that these radiolucent areas are some kind of a disease. Okay, we have the genial tubercle, the number four, the lingual foramen there, number five, and then the inferior border of the mandible. So technically, a lot of times when we take an x-ray on the incisors, on the mandible, we can see the edge of the mandible because it's too... too uh, it's not that long. Our x-ray usually is longer than that, than the mandible itself in there. So that emptiness there or the end is just where the mandible would end and underneath it is just uh, skin. Okay, <laughs> going back at it. So number one here is what? The mental ridge. Again, a lot of things here on the uh, mandible, you'll see that we have a lot of mental things as we go a little bit more. We have the nutrient canals, as I told you, they might appear, they might not appear. So, also, 
Most probably some of it. I don't think there's any um, any disease, for example, or pathology. It just looks a little bit more radiolucent. The bone is just too thin between them. You know, again, that area, and generally we have the the mental fossa in that area here. So it, all of these kind of affect the, how the bone looks like. But it's not, I, I don't see specifically clear. It's a more big area, you know. Again, these appear small, the, the nutrient kinase. That one there, yeah, the one that I, that I put a mark on? Or the actual place in there? It might be, I don't know, you know, I, I don't think so, but it might be in an x-ray, it looked like that. I don't see it's a, it's a, patholo you know, a pathological problem there or any kind of infection, so yeah, it might be. Number four is the genial tubercle, and number five is the lingual foramen, and there, and then you can see again, all of this empty space is just because the mandible ended there, right? And then we can see the rest of the empty area there. So this is the border of the mandible. We're good. Moving on. Now we'll talk about the mandibular canal. Um, <laughs> mandibular canine. I need to go home, huh? <laughs> We're getting there. A few more slides. Um, so you can see again, we have a nutrient canal here. And again, they just push this here, you know, in this slide, the mandibular, uh, I mean, torus mandibularis. I mean, you're not, going, you're not going to see this in every patient, right? This is the mandibular, um, torus mandibularis. So, you know, uh, a patient that have a tori in their mouth. I mean, and again, if you see it inside of their mouth, you know, it will appear in the x-ray. So, huh? So you'll not see it in every like canine exposure that you do. But again, they put that in there just for you guys to see how it might appear or look like, right? And number one, you can see it's a nutrient canal. Maybe like, as you said, uh, Olivia, you know, here it looks even clearer, I guess. And we do have it as a nutrient canal. So most probably that's a nutrient canal that you, uh, you set. Okay. Um, Let's move on. Okay. So these are the things that we already also talked about. I think it's red on your side, but it's white on my side. <laughs> so this is the mandibular canal, number B. This is where the nerve runs through. I know it's not clear. Let's move this up. And then this is the mental foramen. So this is on the outside of the mandible. Again, this is just an imaginary line where it will run through inside of the bone. And then you have the mental foramen here. One good thing to know, this is a mental foramen, is that it's always or almost always located between the two premolars or under the second premolar. So if you see that you know, hole there, where the premolars are, that's most probably the mental foramen. On the other side here, we have the ridges. So we have the myohyoid, mylohyoid ridge for the attachment. And then we have the fossa for the submandibular gland that is a hollow space a little bit more on the mandible. And again, this is from inside, this is from the outside. We're looking at the outside and inside pictures. Moving through, again, they put the torus mandibularis here for you guys to see. Now, on an x-ray, you will see, this is a molar x-ray, right? Well, still premolars. But now we're going to see all of these things that we talked about from outside and inside in one place, right? So, for example, the oblique ridge, is, is it on the outside or the inside of the, the mandible? Oblique ridge? Outside, right? It's the outside part of the mandible. If you look back here, well, that's the inside. See, this is the outside of the mandible. That's the oblique ridge here. And we will see also the myohyoid ridge that is on the inside. So we'll see both of them in an x-ray on the mandible. So see, that's the oblique ridge. 
that is on top more up and then the myohyoid ridge is more down because again that's its location and number five is the that's the okay mandibular canal this is where the the nerve runs through and then number six is the mental foramen right where it has that opening and again you can see this is the first premolar this is the second premolar and a lot of times you will see the mental canal or mental foramen in there between these two teeth moving on you know i'm sorry did i move too fast you guys are done yes okay moving on this is the periodontal so just another picture for premolars you see the periodontal space we already talked about that the lamina dura which you can see in all exposures blank foramen mental you see how it looks much weirder than what we saw it sometimes you see it really that weird sometimes you see it really nice and clear here so it depends on the angle and the patient anatomy definitely but again, it's in that area. Now, this is wrong a little bit. I think I placed it wrong here. So again, see, this is in that area where we have the first and second premolars. So it'll be around here or a little bit down here for our premolars. Okay, but if it's something distinct that you can see, that it, that's it. And we have the submandibular fossa. You have a big fossa in there. Technically, I can kind of see the uh, canal. I can kind of track it. This is the mandibular canal. Um, but, you know, the fossa is covering it as a little bit. Again, another picture, but this time for the molars, where you can see these ridges even more. So number one is the oblique ridge. Number two is the mylohyoid ridge, the one that is a little bit underneath it, right? This is the one that is more top. This is one the one a little bit bottom. And then you have the submandibular fossa and the mandibular canal that runs all the way and opens up in a mental foramen. We're good. Moving on. Yes, we want to leave. <laughs> so oblique ridge again, number one here, you can see it. Myohyoid ridge, see how it's more faint and kind of more down area. Number three is the mandibular canal. You can see it really nice and clear here. And number four is the submandibular fossa. And there. Boom. Yay. Okay. Let's stop sharing. Any questions, guys? Let's stop recording. We run an hour and two minutes.